Hey, YouTube growers and no-till nuts, this is the Rascal Farmer, and welcome to No-Till No Worries. Here we are down in the no-till lab. I almost can't walk through here anymore. This is blowing up. Look at these green ices. They are huge. Now, I know these plants look like they're giants, like they're, you know, eight feet tall because of how tall they are to me, but I am not a normal-sized man. I am 5'4". Um, <laughs> so these plants are, I don't know, about that tall. <laughs> Doing pretty good. I am now fully convinced that this blue dream that I have here has some kind of an epigenetic issue that uh, I kind of screwed up when I cloned it. Um, I'm just starting to figure that stuff out. So, Well, why don't I pull that camera in here and... Uh, We'll take a closer look at these plants. All right, here we are with the green ice, and you can see that I'm doing a pretty decent job leaf stripping that. I've opened it up. There's light getting all the way in down there towards the bottom. Um, I will take stuff, like if you look at this, as I walk through and I look at these plants, if I see something like this, I'll pluck that off just to get some more light getting in down in here. Some like this one here. I'll take that one too. And as I walk through and check out these plants, if I see something that's starting to shade, like this one here, I'll take that. So these two cheeses are leaf stripped, and I'm doing this side-by-side -side comparison. You can follow it on Instagram, and I'll try to mention it here if I remember it as I'm filming, but these first two cheeses are leaf stripped, and I'm leaving the one in the corner not leaf stripped. And it's just now, well, now they're still about the same height. I'm really, really surprised that all these extra leaves here are not causing this plant to explode and shoot up beyond these over here that are leaf stripped. That was, that was really shocking to me. Bud sites. Look at all the bud sites. Bud sites. Look at all the bud... Well, you can't even see any damn bud sites, can you? They're in there. They're just not late in this shade. So, we're going to run this comparison to the end. I am pretty sure what we're going to find is bigger top colas on the plant that is not stripped with a whole bunch of larf and garbage down there below. And we're going to find smaller colas on this, but dense nugs from top to bottom. And I got to believe that the in the end, the weight on the stripped plants is going to far outweigh that one. But we'll see. And then the blue dream. What a pain in my ass. Um, there's a whole field of science in growing plants that I didn't even really know existed. We always used to talk about things such as strain degradation. But it turns out that epigenetics plays a big role in plants. And I am certainly no pro on that. Um, getting into it. But if you take a stressed out plant and you clone it, it will carry those characteristics into the next run. And there's a good chance that you have screwed it up. And the only thing that's going to save your bacon is either destroying the plant and starting over or tissue culture. So that is something that I am exploring. Look at the difference between those green ices and the rest of the room. Can you believe that? I just, I, it blows me away every single time I grow this strain. It's just a monster. Cover crop is still doing nice. I know I said that I was going to mulch that down to the ground, but I haven't done that yet, and I am going to wait for another, well, let's see, this is the beginning of day 11, um, Wednesday, when I do my major leaf stripping, 
which I like to do right around day 16. I am going to throw all those leaves, cut them all up, throw them in the bottom of the pots. Then I'm going to cut down the cover crop and I'm going to mulch it all with straw. So I will wait until I strip it so I'm not throwing all these green leaves on top of the mulch. I'll throw them down underneath and mulch all of it. All right. Well, oh, yeah, one other thing. Jesus, good Lord. Dehumidifier. I know I've got the room open now. It says that it's 56%, 55% humidity in here. I have got this set for 50% on the floor because right up there at the canopy of the plants where that probe is in the center of the screen, it's giving me a reading of 55 when I have the dehumidifier set at 50. So basically what happened was after that last filming where I gave these plants four gallons of water each, we ran into two days of rain and the humidity in this room, I was running my exhaust fan 24 hours a day and the humidity in this room, I could not keep it below 71%. Absolute madness. So I went out, dropped a couple hundred bones on a dehumidifier. You can see when you look down here at the little tank, because I can't drain that to waste, I am half full on the tank. And I will fill that stupid thing in 24 hours trying to keep this humidity down. So if you're going to run no-till and you're going to use the big huge pots, you're going to give them a lot of water you are going to have a humidity issue because it has been two days trying to tweak that humidifier and my exhaust fan to get this room dialed in. But they look fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. You can notice my yellowing tips have started to disappear. I did amend these pots. Just the green ices with a couple gallons that had a uh, teaspoon of Epsom salts in each gallon. I was running into a magnesium deficiency. Those leaves that were kind of pointing up, they were praying for magnesium. I was looking at some intervenal chlorosis, some yellowing, and a little bit of tip burn. And I eliminated every single possibility that I could think of that would cause a magnesium deficiency. And then finally just said screw it and gave them the magnesium that they wanted and it took care of the problem. Because if, <laughs> here's what I found with no-till. I know this channel's called No Till No Worries, but if you want to give yourself a worry, go ahead and amend for something like a magnesium deficiency when really the problem is caused by something else environmental and then once you realize that your magnesium that you've added didn't fix it and you finally find the environmental condition then you fix the environmental problem and now you got a magnesium toxicity oh yeah yeah it's a joy so start you know it's like working with a car if your car doesn't start you know, you start looking at spark plugs, you, there's, a, there's a flow chart you can follow. And the first thing that I want to do in a no-till setup when I start running into problems is start looking for environmental causes first. Then I'll start throwing nutrients into the pots. So that's what we got going on here today. We are not going to water today because those pots are still looking good. But let's go into the uh, veg tent and we'll see the uh, little war I'm waging on thrips. Yeah, before I leave this room, some people have asked me, what the heck light are you using? Why does that not look like a flower light? Well, it is a flower light. It's a thousand watt high pressure sodium. And you can see the yellow light. But what I found in filming was that, and I'm going to show you this now, is that right now in the auto white balance feature, the temperature setting on this camera is 5,000 Kelvins. And if I go into the temp settings 
and I dial down that temp to 3000 kelvins and then I take the tint and I change that tint to a positive 20 I can get this room even though it's a high pressure sodium bulb to almost look like I'm using a metal halide or some kind of a ceramic metal halide so that's neat so if you want to know what settings I'm using on my camera to get this thing so that it doesn't look all washed out I've got the temp set at 3,000 kelvins, and I've got the tent tint set at a positive 20. Figured I'd just pass that on because somebody had asked why my room doesn't look like it's using a flower bulb, and I figured out how to tweak those settings so that I can make the colors look more natural and not all washed out. There you go. Friendly little tip from me to you. Oh yeah, and then when you go underneath your metal halide light, you want to make sure that you turn that auto white balance back on because there certainly is a big, huge difference between, uh, there you go. It decided to auto set itself at 6300 Kelvins and a tint of 40. So yeah, you want to make sure you turn it back on, otherwise it'll look ridiculous. Well, here we are in the veg tent. And we're looking at the little seedlings, and it has been a battle with the thrips. It's, uh, let's see, what have I done for thrip control? Let me see if I can, you know, the big problem with this camera is if I walk in front of this to go into that room, I'm going to, you know what, I'm going to just take this out of there because the focus is going to go crazy on me. Yeah, I'm a tight ass. I'm still shooting this with a, uh, with an iPhone 6 Plus. Looks pretty damn good, doesn't it? All right, so stepping into the room, you can see as I try to focus, there you go, thrip damage. You can see it. Look at that poor little cold black hurting. Those little white lines, that's all thrip damage. They hit them all. Apparently, thrips like the code black better than anything else in the room. Every single one of those code blacks got hit. They got hit harder than the ninja fruit, which you're going to see here. This row is ninja fruit. Doesn't look near as bad. They must like the cookies or the Blackberry co or Blackberry OG in that code black because I don't know. It just seems like sometimes bugs prefer some strain. Last summer, it was the Blue Dream, and I have a Tangerine Fino of a Northern Lights. And those two plants were ravaged by spider mites. Two empty pots here waiting for my green ice clones. That is the blue dream. And then green crack. So I'm going to give these little uh, guys and gals some water. Um, I hit them with a two ounce per gallon mixture. You saw that in the last video of Method 1. That night, Wednesday night, there were thrips all over the plants. They laughed at two ounces per gallon. So I mixed up four ounces per gallon and hit them again. The next morning, they were still here. So yesterday, I went out and bought some... I believe it's, uh, I know it's Spinosad, I believe it's, God, Captain Jack something, don't remember, let me go, let's go see if we can find out what it is, come back over here into my little cabinet, I can remember where I put it, into the messy cabinet I go, to pull it out, Captain Jack's dead bug. It's been sad. 
So I mixed up two ounces per gallon of that, put it in my little pump up sprayer, and sprayed the living crap out of them. I used a quart. Everything is dead. Everything. There are no flies. I was looking at little teeny creepy crawlies in here. Pretty much, pretty much knocked everything out, except, and I believe I'm looking at soil mites. Look at this. I've seen this, I've seen this before in my pots. See if you can zoom in on that. See them? All over the pots. Everywhere. Not on my plants. A little teeny soil mites, I think. Jeez, I don't know. There are so many different species of stuff in here. It's it's ridiculous. But if somebody could tell me exactly what that is, that would be cool. They are not on the plants at all, but they sure as hell are all over these pots. Oh, wait a minute. There is one. I'm not quite sure what that is or what those are. But I hit these with spinosad yesterday. And those are still here. So if somebody knows what those are, man, hit me up in the comments and let me know because I'm not sure if I'm looking at a beneficial or a pest and if I should freak out or just let it ride. But, you know, as long as the plants are rebounding and these don't seem to be hurting them and I'm not looking at any more damage, I'm going to let it ride because there are so many things that, that live and die in these pots. Well... There you go. I'm going to give these girls some water, or guys. And then we're going to go out and uh, take a look at the outdoor greenhouse that I started ripping the plastic off of yesterday. Move the chickens out of the way here. I just walk by them. Well... <clears throat> Started taking it apart, got the plastic off of it, the broken bows, but you can see it. What a mess. Oh my gosh, the crushed pots. Heartbreaking. Totally. <laughs> oh, God, there's the wood stove. Well, at least now, my, you can even see some of the cover crop is coming back. At least now we're going to get some rain in here. I wanted to make sure I got the plastic off. I've got to get in here and amend these pots. Yeah, it's about 42 degrees right now. So it's going to be a while before we have to do anything. Wow, look at that. There's still some little buds on that plant. I think I bought some Mexican in high school once that looked like that. <laughs> That is severely cured blue dream right there, guys. <laughs> it doesn't get any more cured than that. Freeze dried. Oh, man. What a mess. All right. Figured I'd give you the update and show you what I did. Party yesterday. Pulled this plastic off. 
got up on that crazy ladder up to the top to pull that stupid zip wire. Really, really cool the way this stuff is attached. I shot some video yesterday with a new GoPro, but uh, it didn't turn out, so I got a problem with that camera. But you've got a, a zip wire that looks like this. And it fits in that channel. And you wiggle this wiggle wire into this channel and it holds that plastic all the way around the greenhouse. Worked freaking great. Right up until kabam! Mother Nature said, screw you and your plans. So, I'm going to use this existing rail system and we'll just put another one in its place and we'll call it good. Well, there you go. That's the mess. And you can see the cage, chicken wired, the whole thing, the whole roof was that panel. Gotta make it legal. <laughs> There's your greenhouse update. <laughs> well, all right, one last time, looking around the main room, day 11. Looking at the cheeses. Man, look at nice. The second cheese. Third cheese. Big leaves. That's a those and that's not even the biggest one. And I might whack that leaf off if it decides to shade out my little runt here. And then the monsters. Room is filling out. Looking good. Alright guys, you know what to do, like, share, subscribe, I'm the Rascal Farmer, and we'll see you next time on No Till No Worries. Go out and grow something guys, do something good.